All right, we're going to come to a fifth sum and we look at the parts. Well, I think it's getting better and better each time, aren't you? Now let's look at this sum. And they said the sine x is equal to 0 0.4695. And they tell us that x is lying between uh, 0 to 360 degrees. And you have to find that x that satisfies this condition. But they did not tell us that you don't need to use calculator, right? So you use your calculator. You said, hey, sine x is equal to 0 0.4695 and your x is going to be an inverse sine when you bring your sine over you say an inverse sine of 0 0.4695 use your calculator my dear press inverse sine 0 0.4695 press it got it and press equal and you see the angle to be 28.0018 so we just want to nearest your x is 28 degrees but they want all answers relating to 28 degrees and it's a positive so where does it lie it's in this quadrant and this quadrant if your x is 28 degrees 180 minus 28 you have 152 yeah so therefore this is called i like to let you know basic angle all right so therefore your x is going to be 28 180 minus 28 is 152 degrees these are the two answers now in part b they tell us the sign x is a p and the x is an obtuse angle you look at that i mean we just draw it this sine x is p over one all right we put it this way first and have that mental picture that x is obtuse x is in this quadrant it's p opposite over the hypotenuse this adjacent will be using pythagoras theorem one minus p squared all right, from there, they want you to find out what is cos x. So you look at cos x, yes, adjacent over the hypotenuse, but lying in this quadrant is going to be a negative. So it's 1 minus p squared over 1. That's your cos x. Next part, they want you to find out what is tangent x. Tangent x opposite over adjacent x is lying in this quadrant it's going to be a negative all right we look at it it's going to be a negative p over the square root of 1 minus p squared that's your answer minus p over the square root of 1 minus p squared got it good now if they ask you, hey, what is sine 180 minus x? All right, you want to find the sine of 180 minus x. You know that x is obtuse. Obtuse means what? It's lying between 90 degrees to 180 degrees. Now, when we want to find out 180 minus x, you take 180 minus 180, what will it be? A zero. 180 minus 90, what do you get? 90. So this is the bigger angle. 180, min 180 minus 180 will be a zero. So this angle, you can see it, my dear, is lying in the first quadrant. And remember your CAST, they both take the same answer. Your x, which is lying here, because it's obtuse, 180 minus x is a q. They lie in the same, all right? This too, C-A-S-T, acute angle. And what is the answer of sine? Well, sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. They share the same answer. That's your answer. 
Now the last part, C. They said, hey, angle X is lying between 0 and pi. Between 0 and pi radian. They want you to find out what is X when cos X is a minus 0 0.5. Now let's look at it again. Your cos X is a negative. Now get the information right. It's between 0 to pi. Your X is in this, whichever it is. It's between here. And your cos X is a minus 0 0.5. The very fact they are given that your cos x is a minus 0 0.5 tells you the minus lies here, right? Second quadrant, negative for cos. So your x is lying here. Now what is 0 0.5? Well, it's a half and so your x is one, sorry, adjacent. This is a minus half adjacent over the hypotenuse. So 1 over 2, Pythagoras theorem, 4, take away 1, root 3. So you look at this picture, you know where your x is, connect them. And if your cos x is a minus 0 0.5, that's where x is. And so your x is going to be, alright, if you look at it, you find your angle. And that's in that region. And you know, you can see this picture very easily. 2, 2, 1, sorry, 1, 1, root 3. You get this half, uh, this is 30 degrees, alright, which is pi over 6. This is your 60 degrees, pi over 3. You want to cos half, 1 over 2, the basic angle is this, pi over 3. I'm just doing it without the calculator. So this will be your angle, basic angle. Pi minus pi over 3 is a 2 third pi and because it's lying in this quadrant, therefore your x is equal to 2 third pi, which is actually 120 degrees. Now I'd just like to re-emphasize this because they've said Cos x is a minus 0 0.5. It tells us that's not lying in the first nor the fourth quadrant. It's possibly lying between here. But they told us that x is between 0 to pi. That's the condition they're given. Look at the sum again. They say it's between 0 to pi. That's 0 to pi. So obviously, it's minus, your x must be lying the second quadrant. Now you also see this figure half, quite, you can connect it. And you can look at the triangle, 2, 2, 1, 1, root 3. And you look at half, that's just 60 degrees. Well, it's lying in this angle, pi over 3, 60 degrees is pi over 3. And in this quadrant, it's pi minus theta, pi minus pi over 3. When you have a pi minus pi over 3, pi is 3 over 3, minus 1 over 3, what do you get? You get a 2 third pi. And that's how we got that answer. Now we can also use your calculator, alright, because they did not specify don't use calculator. You just press your calculator, press on me an inverse cos, 0 0.5, get me a basic angle, you will see a 60 degrees, or if you put in radian, you will see that in radian. Alright, pi over 3. Now, and because it's negative, it's a second quadrant, you can see very clear cut the answer, it is 120 degrees. Alright, which is 2 third pi. Alright, now are you clear with the fundamentals? Getting strong? Right. There, I'm sure you're very comfortable and we can move on to the next level of maths which I'll be introducing in my next, the next video clip and it will be on sine rule, cosine rule but I'd like to show you my dear, it's gonna be easy alright, as we sail through it 
and following that sine rule and cosine rule, you'll be learning on bearings too. Have a great day.